This video is brought to you by Rask AI. More on them in a little bit. What is ChatGPT's IQ? YouTube keeps recommending me these silly videos where people all rank each other based on how smart they think they are, and then they all take an IQ test. This got the data nerd in me thinking, where would ChatGPT rank in this scale? And maybe more importantly, would ChatGPT rank higher than me in IQ? Admittedly, I really don't know anything about IQ tests. From what I've seen, it looks like the questions usually involve patterns and possibly shapes in a sequence, and your job is to choose what shape or pattern comes next. This seems like a pretty good opportunity to test the new image analysis capabilities of ChatGPT. Before I get to the results, let's dive a bit into what IQ tests supposedly test for. According to ChatGPT itself, an IQ test, or intelligence quotient test, measures a person's cognitive abilities in relation to their age group. So it's designed to assess certain mental faculties, such as logical reasoning, which is the ability to solve problems through deduction, mathematical ability, which are skills related to numerical problems, spatial visualization, which is the ability to understand and manipulate shapes and spaces, language skills, which are vocabulary, comprehension, and verbal reasoning abilities. And finally, memory, so recall of information after a given period. These all seem like things that ChatGPT should probably be decent at, so let's put it to the test. So for context, the average IQ is 100, and that's the first baseline we're going to use. The second baseline we're going to use is me. So I'm going to take the same test as ChatGPT. I'm going to take the test before and then have ChatGPT go through and answer the same questions. You know, pitting myself against ChatGPT and against other people can be very humbling. And I'm a little nervous about uh, what I'm going to find out here. Hopefully I will not be attaching my self-worth too much to what my IQ score is. As I'm sure you know, ChatGPT is helping to produce more content than ever before. But what about the distribution? Rask AI helps to scale this content by translating and dubbing your video and audio content into more than 100 and 30 languages. Rask has voice cloning in more than 20 different languages and can even lip sync. Nibi ChatGPT kong song ming ma. It is mas listo ke ChatGPT. Sind sie schlauer als ChatGPT? Kya ab ChatGPT se adhik smart hain? I could ask you this secret question in German and Spanish and Chinese and a host of different languages. Let me know in the comments what my secret question is. You can try out Rask AI yourself with a special 20% off discount that I've linked in the description and in the pinned comment. All right, let's jump in. When ChatGPT was answering the questions, I was pretty impressed with its confidence. It was very confident about every answer that it gave. I was also pretty sure when I was going through with ChatGPT that a lot of those answers were wrong. So it might be a little concerning that ChatGPT is so confident in the face of wrong answers. ChatGPT also seemed to do better on questions where it explained its answers, which is consistent with the academic research that's coming out around how to get the most out of these large language models. The first test that we took was fairly surprising. ChatGPT ended up with an IQ of 102, which is better than average, but was it better than me? I actually just edged it out by a bit with a score of 116. I was a little weirded out by this test and I thought it might not be like super accurate because it wanted me to sign up for a bunch of things and pay a bunch of money in order to get the score. So I decided that it would make the most sense to take another one just to double check and have more data to go from. The company was also offering brain training services which from a logical perspective, I think that they would probably try to suppress scores as much as possible so that you'd feel like you needed to improve your score. The next test we took, I absolutely crushed. I had a whopping 138. So you can start calling me Ken Genius now. Now the question is, could ChatGPT measure up? The answer is that it could not. ChatGPT on the second IQ test got a 55, which is not very good. So what could possibly explain the difference in performance between the two tests between me and ChatGPT? The cool thing about all these tests is that they break down all of the questions into the types of intelligence they were testing you for. So you can see what areas you performed well in and what you didn't perform well in. So let's look at what ChatGPT was good at and where it struggled. So ChatGPT did the best in pattern recognition, as well as verbal intelligence. And it did reasonably well in mathematical ability. ChatGPT struggled the most with spatial reasoning, and that's actually the area that I excelled at the most. And in the second test that we took, the majority of it was spatial reasoning. I think that's probably why I did particularly well in the second test compared to the first test. In the second test, ChatGPT 
really performed quite well at numerical reasoning, but all of the other areas it really struggled with. As a human, I feel I was a little bit more well-rounded all the way around than ChatGPT was compared to just the specific areas where ChatGPT excelled or failed miserably at. More important than the scores, were the lessons that we learned from doing this little exercise. I think ChatGPT still has a long way to go for interpreting visual information. It might be more practical to use it for math and logical reasoning now, the areas where it was the strongest performing. Secondly, honestly, I was riding pretty high on my score from the second test. Getting a high IQ number made me feel quite good about myself. That second test would fall sort of into a, a gifted category. That is until I actually looked up the research around IQ. What I found that IQ is literally not correlated with success in work or life or even happiness. Actually, high IQ people are more likely to be less happy overall. Essentially, IQ tests are really good at evaluating how good you are at taking IQ tests. And you really don't have to be good at taking IQ tests to be great at any career, especially data science. Something I also learned is that when I was younger, I think I was in middle school, my parents had me take some diagnostics to understand about my learning ability. And they said that my IQ was almost exactly average. Now, as I've grown and developed, my IQ score has actually gone up. And I think to me, that's a function of my interest in solving these types of problems, my patience for sitting through an exam like this. And I don't think IQ is something that's even static over time. I wouldn't put a whole lot of faith in this number. If you like solving problems and, and doing some of these quirky tasks in your free time, you'll probably do well. Again, it has no bearing on your overall success. So I hope this was interesting. I hope you learned about ChatGPT and some of the changes we have there, as well as what kind of average or not very good a metric IQ is. Until next time, good luck on your data science journey.